Hello again. They say that there is nothing new under the sun, and this is clearly seen when it comes to the idea of free energy out of nowhere. In the 16th century, there were claims of perpetual motion machines, and for the next few hundred years, these were promoted by tricksters and con artists who tried to persuade gullible people to invest in their schemes. All these things tend to mirror the anxieties of the times. During the so-called oil crisis in the 1970s, a man came up with a car which ran forever on water. The idea was simplicity itself. You filled up the tank and started the thing rolling. The movement of the wheels powered a dynamo, the current of which was used to perform electrolysis on the water, splitting it into hydrogen and oxygen. These were then fed into an internal combustion engine where they exploded and powered the engine. The only waste product was water, which was then fed back into the water tank. Hey presto, you can drive around the world forever on free energy. Incredible as it may seem, the inventor of this gadget made a fortune from investors who thought that it would provide unlimited clean energy and enable them to drive forever on a tank of water. I'm tempted to give the names and details of um, a British patent agent who fell for this scam and some of the uh, companies which invested in it, but that would be unkind after so many years, I think. Exactly the same thing is happening now with the quest for net zero and the frantic desire to avoid burning fossil fuels. It is Africa where this latest wonder of modern science is supposedly emerging now, and it involves piezoelectric devices. I might pause here for a moment and um, remark that in ancient times it was said always something new out of Africa, and we've got a, something of a tradition of thinking of Africa as somewhere where amazing things happen and mysterious things can appear. It's um, something in our psychologic. It's, uh, I think Africa is probably a good place for people to come up with this scheme and try and pretend to Europeans and Americans that this is where it originated. Anyway, the latest wonder of modern science emerging in Africa is supposedly something involving piezoelectric devices. Anybody with a lighter knows how piezoelectricity works. You click the button and a little hammer strikes a particular kind of crystal, which then produces a spark, like a miniature bolt of lightning, which then lights the gas. Watch. That's it. Electricity from thin air. Surely we can scale this up and then produce larger quantities of electricity in the same way. Just use a crystal or piece of rock and it produces an electric current. There are many videos on YouTube from Africa which purport to show this very thing. I give a link in the description to this video to one of these scams, the Congo Electric Stones, which supposedly give um, electricity for nothing. A slightly more sophisticated version is a claim made by a young man from Sierra Leone that he managed to provide electric power for nine schools and over a hundred homes by concealing piezoelectric crystals under the road in an African neighbourhood and using the vibrations of traffic and passers-by to generate power. This fellow can be seen in the thumbnail to this video. What is fascinating is that this man has actually been awarded a master's from Durham University. And he's been given prizes for science and even met the Pope, all on the strength of this supposed invention. There are no details of how this was all achieved, no photographs or films, not even plans or diagrams of the supposed setup for generating power in this way. And yet, Everybody is apparently taking the thing on trust. This is the latest example of the perpetual motion business, and it fits in perfectly with our modern quest for clean energy. 
It's obvious to anybody who stops to think for a moment that nine schools were not really powered in this way and that the whole thing is a nonsense. But because he's a personable young black man, nobody feels that many questions should be asked. It would be embarrassing to cross-examine him and demand evidence. I love it when I see new instances of very ancient trends, and this one is marvellous. In the description to this video, I give a few links to stuff about Jeremiah Theronka, including a BBC piece which simply repeats the implausible claims uncritically and behaves as though this is a perfectly genuine thing. This is, of course, just a small illustration of what bloody fools there are in the world.